Alright, so today I'm going to be playing a demo for a game called Loretta. I was just about to play it, and when I went to the itch page, it had been updated, so we've got a brand spanking new demo. Here's what it says. The year is 1947. Laura and Walter Harris moved to a farm, which used to belong to his parents. Walter is a writer and Laura is a housewife. Both are quite unsuccessful. The family is going through financial difficulties. The situation is also complicated by the fact that Walter owes money to people from New York. And although the husband keeps it a secret from his wife, Laura has a suspicion. However, she suspects him of cheating. Laura understands that she gave up her job, her dreams, and other opportunities for her failure of a husband she doesn't even love. Now she is stuck in a cold, empty house, barely making ends meet. As the struggles to make loan payments, she finds out that Walter's publishing house has insured his life. In the event of his death, the insurance sum would be $30,000. A plan is born in Laura's mind. Okay, it sounds like I know where this is going, but maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm wrong. So, uh, new game. Uh, so this looks like an epileptic warning. I don't think I'm epileptic, so... This game has an autosave feature. Cool beans! Autosave. Warning, the game even take place in the United States of America in 1947. To reflect the reality of that time, Loretta contains topics that some people may find unacceptable. Characters due to their nature, age, and social status use words and phrases that do not always correspond to the norms of the language, including profanity. All events and characters depicted in the game are entirely fictitious. Any similarities to actual events or persons living or dead are purely coincidental. Play responsibly. Make well-considered decisions. Okay. Um, I may edit some parts of the game, you know, if that's the case, because, uh, yeah. I think it had whispered to him things about himself which he did not know. Okay, I, I didn't even read that. Like, I, I read part of it and then it just skipped on. Okay. So we are driving. So we're driving somewhere? Where are we going? Going home, right? Created by Yakov Butuzov. I don't speak Russian. I'm sorry. I don't know how to pronounce things properly. Loretta. Spooky. Spooky stuff. My name is Loretta Lou Harris. Friends call me Laura. I'm 38 years old. I was born in Denton, Nebraska, and as soon as I turned si 16, I ran away to the East Coast. I'm an unemployed ornithologist. You are a bird scientist? And a mediocre housewife. A few months ago, my husband and I moved to a farm, which belonged to his parents. Life here isn't exactly simple, but we had managed until two weeks ago when Walter disappeared without a trace. Did you do it, Laura? Did you make your husband disappear? I think you did. I really do. Detective? Mrs. Harris? My name is Frank Chambers. I'm looking for your husband. Are you the police? I've already talked to the sheriff. I've got nothing more to say. No, ma'am. I'm leading a private investigation. Some people from New York, very important people, would really like to have a word with Walter. Hmm, we'll tell him to get in line. Who are these important people you're talking about? I didn't catch your last name. Hmm. We'll just tell him to get in line. I see where you're coming from, ma'am. But still, I would appreciate if you could spare some time for me. May I come in? No. My house, my rules. Wipes his neck with a handkerchief. You've got a, um, very lovely house, ma'am. <laughs> Please don't. I can't stand this place either. Is this Walter's house? His parents. Oh, I can clicky clicky on stuff. Oh, school, cool. It gets on my nerves. Sometimes I feel like I can hear it ticking even in my bedroom. Walter's hat. Bought it in New York. And oh, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna kill the detective, ma'am. How long has Walter been gone for? Uh, for two weeks. For 14 or 15 days? Hmm. Would you like something to drink? I thought you'd never ask. The kitchen is over there. Can I click on the axe? I'll click on the axe. I can't click on the axe. Painting. Scribbles. What, what? Is this the door I go in? 
A moose head. I asked Walter a thousand times to throw this nasty thing away. You're not going to answer that? Hmm, I suppose. I suppose I could. Hello? Hello? Can I talk to Mr. Harris, please? I'm either going to say who's calling or, well, he can't come to the phone right now. Well, he can't come to the phone right now. What time will he be back, miss? This is Alan Fitzpatrick from the Atlantic Press Publishing House. You must understand it's extremely urgent. This is about his new book. We haven't received the second part. The contracts are ready, but... Miss, could you please enter the... Huh, they hung up. It happens sometimes. So, where's the kitchen? Is this the ki- Oh, this is the kitchen. I'm afraid lemonade is all I can offer. Just water will be fine, ma'am. My throat's a little dry. From the road. Click on that sickle. Oh, I can't- Okay. Tell me, ma'am. Your husband. Did he leave some kind of note, perhaps? Or a letter? No, he didn't. I haven't found anything, at least. And neither did the sheriff's men. Hmm. I can play with the radio. How do I turn it off? I've got poison. Oh, I poisoned my husband. I know I did. Sorry. There's a real nice almond smell in here. Loretta. Dot dot dot. Is that my poison? An April furniture catalog. Everything is nuclear. Everything a nuclear family needs. How were those things in the novel? Did Walter finish it? Is Mr. Wallace interested in that too? No, ma'am. I'm just curious. It's a pity that the true work of a detective isn't quite like the stuff your husband writes about. You know, in his hard-boiled detective stories. It's the laws of the genre, Mr. Chambers. So, where do I get this dude some water at? Do I need to get him a cup first? Calendar? Where's my cups? Dude's thirsty. Wants water. I don't have any- is this a cup? Another month's flown. Another month's flown by. My gosh. I should get Mr. Chambers some water. Yeah, where's your cups? Ah, there they are, right there on the table. This humidity is killing me. Wipes his face with a handkerchief. I don't think it's been this hot since the spring of '39. Where's that music coming from? It's from the fields. Farmers. Walter rents out the land. I guess the music helps them pass the time. Hmm. Chambers' eyes linger on Laura's hips. Laura decides not to notice it. Hey! What the hell? Not so fast, bitch! I think I died. Chambers shot me. He had no choice. The poison a man. To poison a man in front of his eyes. It wasn't my brightest idea. Who would have thought? That's how my story ends. Is, is that how- is that, is that- is that the full demo? I don't know. I'm curious, though. I am curious if that's the full demo. Was there another option I could have- I could have taken? Oh! Oh! I gave him his water this time. How weird is that? Uh, so he drunk his water and he says it's such a shame for a fine lady like you to be out here all by yourself. Dries lips with sleeve. And how much land have you got? 120 acres. <whistles> Don't get excited. It was mortgaged a long while back. May I have a look at the yard? If you wish. What the? It's the pipes. Son of a... We just got plumbing installed. And now sometimes... I'm sorry. I'll have to go down to the basement. Do you need any help? No. There's no need. Besides, you wanted to look around, don't, didn't you? Yeah, this guy's a little bit of a sleeve, because he sleaze bag, because he's like he's eyeballing me, looking at my hips and stuff, and I don't appreciate that. At least I don't appreciate that. She might appreciate it, but I don't appreciate that. It's damp and dark in the basement, too damp and too dark, and it smells like mold, just like Chambers' breath. Actually, Laura can hardly find the water pipes. At first glance, everything seems to be in order but there's a weird buzzing sound coming from them. 
Look closer. Looks like there's something stuck in one of them. It's hard to say what exactly. Try to pull it out. Loretta holds out her hand and touches something wet and hairy. She grabs it and pulls. It's a piece of my husband. Oh, it's a dead rat. Could have been worse. The buzzing has stopped for now. It seems Chambers went out to the yard. Can I poison his water now? Can I poison his drink now? Can I poison it now? I can't. If I go outside, I guess I go outside. Okay. A shovel. Tell me, Miss Harris. Where do you think your husband might be? Perhaps you have some ideas. He's in the well? Oh, I... Went back to New York? Perhaps he went back to New York. He's got a sister there. Um, what was her name? Cynthia. Nah, I already spoke to her. Maybe you passed him. While you were on your way here. Walter could be halfway to New York already. Well, it's possible. Well, ma'am, thank you for your time. I'm sorry you had to come all this way for nothing. But I really don't think I can help. It's fine. That's what I'm getting paid for. Thanks for the water. There's only one thing I can't understand, Mrs. Harris. If Walter did indeed run away, why did he leave? Ha ha. My name is Loretta Lou Harris. Friends call me Laura. I'm an unemployed housewife. Stuck in a hellhole. With nothing. But sun and fucking wheat. Two weeks ago, I killed my husband. And put him in the well. I'm not trying to make excuses, but I think that I should tell my story from the very beginning. Not to be forgiven by the gentlemen of the jury, as I know it's impossible, but to give a chance to whoever is going to read this, to at least try and understand me. My relationship with Walter started to fall apart long before the day of his death, and long before we moved to this godforsaken farm. I even liked it in the beginning. The idea of treading the bustling city for a humble life in the country. But of course, wishful thinking is all it was. There isn't much choice in the life of a woman. Take enough wrong turns, and you're already a second-class person. And now I was starting to see that all the turns I'd been making were wrong. The well. An old well. I don't know why, but it gives me the creeps. We never use it. Oh, I can go in my house? Yeah. A broken step creaked as usual. Nails were sticking out, waiting for the moment they could finally jab into my leg. I asked Walter to fix it. It was all in vain. Walter was not a bad person. He rarely got drunk. And even if he did, he was never aggressive. In all the years we spent together, he only hit me once. And he regretted it bitterly afterwards. But everything about him started to irritate me. And I reckon the feeling was mutual. This irritation turned into a burning hatred. It only got stronger after we moved here. I couldn't stand his unbearable snoring, the way he spit everywhere like a camel, and how food got stuck in his teeth. But what drove me completely mad was that he was always reeking of onions, constantly. It was a disgusting, oily smell that soaked into all the furniture. But the strangest thing was, I've never used onions in this house. A bird. She loves birds. She's an ornithologist. Scare or ignore? I'm ignore him. He's a cool bird. He's just chilling. Uh, let's wash the dishes, I guess. We'll never run out of dirty dishes in this house. Oh, it's true. The dishes, like, you'll always have dishes to do in laundry. Cut my finger. And the phone's ringing, of course. So who's on the phone? Walt and I met on the eve of 1929. He was a little older than me. Handsome, of course. He worked as a newspaper correspondent. But the name of it, I'm afraid I don't remember. They are probably quit publishing by now anyway. My mother died in 1930. Walter and I got married in 1931. I became pregnant in 1933. Ectopic pregnancy. Followed by a miscarriage. I lost my child before I could even experience motherhood. Hello? Who's speaking? Are you going to speak or what? Do you 
You think it's funny? Hmm. Let's go into the creepy... Creepy room. Windows. Broom. Sweep the kitchen floor. Leave it. I guess I'll sweep. Because I did break the glass. Honey, I'm going to the city. I'll be back soon. I need to go to the post office. What happened? A plate broke. Well, it's okay. We'll buy a new one. We don't have the money for that. We have enough for a plate. Listen. Could you iron my suit? I think it's in the bedroom. Take the key. Fine. Buy some milk on your way back. Gotta have milk. You always, you're always fucking buying milk. Like, as an adult. I can, I, I, I can confirm you are always fucking buying milk. Alright, hun. I'm off. So, I need to find my bedroom. Where do I live? Where do I sleep? Upstairs, maybe? Ah. A jewelry box. Press any key to leave. Oh, I can find a code. Sometimes my little mouse. Watch it jitter. That's interesting. Oh, I just closed the game. Whoops. Darn. I, that's not what I meant to do. I was not trying to quit the game. I was trying to just quit the, the interaction there. Alright, so I'm actually not going to click on this box again, but I'm back. Um, I have two stairwells? Um, okay. Excuse me. A guest bedroom. As I understand it, Walter's parents slept in separate rooms. The harsh traditions of the 1910s. Walter and I couldn't find the key no matter how hard we tried. It's somehow weird not to be able to get into all the parts of the house. However, it's too big as it is. It's not that weird. I mean, lots of people sleep in separate rooms. Walter doesn't like it. I want to enter his office when he's not around. Enter anyways. Forget the idea. Let's forget the idea for now. We'll 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 play by the rules for now. An old fireplace. I was not expecting this game to be as big as it is. Like I was just expecting like a little short 15 minute game, but this seems like it's something more. The old fireplace sets the tone for the whole room. I don't like this room. But I, I like this. I like the art style of this game. I like the interactivity. I like the way the story's being told. And I noticed that there was a wish list option on the itch page. And I am going to wish list this. This looks awesome. Windows. The windows are covered with years of grime. I tried to clean them at first, but then I gave up. A gramophone? Walter bought his. Walter brought his Al Jolson and Mario Lanza records. I usually prefer classical music. I'm not in the mood to listen to it. Where's this bedroom? Where's my bedroom? I'm trying to find my bedroom so I can find his suit and, and wash it. Is that where that room... That's... Okay, so it loops. Okay, I see. I see now. I see. Is this my bedroom? This goes outside. Car, mailbox. Did my husband not take his, uh... Take his car? Or do we have two cars? Uh... I guess I'm gonna go in his office. Uh... Go in anyway. Ugh. Smells like too much of cigarettes in here. Bookshelf. Dusty bookshelf. Walter moved half of our library to this place. I didn't even take a warm coat. Uh, where's, where's my husband's suit? Some weird noises in here. Some weird creaky noises. Yeah, he wants his suit... ...ironed or whatever, but I don't even know where the suit is. Where do we sleep? Something went wrong in New York. I never found out what exactly. Walter fell into a pit of debt and took me with him. He left the obscenely high deposit we'd paid on the apartment, packed our bags, and rented the oldest car he could find. In the spring of 1947, we moved to the farm, to Walter's parents' old house. Edna and Douglas Harris died of typhus in 1927, and so we left the uncozy lifeboat that was our former life and rushed into the unknown. Alright, I found the bedroom. Uh, suitcases? Our belongings are in those suitcases. A human life contained to a few bags. We still haven't unpacked most of it. Oh, uh, what's in it? Yeah, yeah. 
Oh, it's important stuff. Those are important documents. Looks like a birth certificate. Uh, some postcards, maybe? A deed, maybe? Just a letter. Oh, I clicked. I clicked through it. I, I wanted to read it. In October of 1945, I got pregnant again. I was older. Parch. I don't know that word. Par parturient? I was older parturient. I don't know what that word means. With my medical history, neither me nor my baby had a chance. But there was a miracle. Nine months later, I gave birth to a boy, Johnny Harris. However, I'm getting ahead of myself again. Maybe too backwards. Long story short, I lost Johnny too. Walter Suit. Of all of Walter's sins, his adultery was the least to concern me. Let's say his gambling affect my life in a more serious way. His adultery was also pretty obvious. Walter hadn't touched me in months. I can't say I was too upset by it, though. And still, I knew one thing for sure. The ginger bitch Margaret apparently loved her fucking onions. That's why he smells like onions. Wow. What am I doing? I don't know what I'm doing here. Some kind of a transition? Oh, I just had to play the... I just had to play the little xylophone. Not the xylophone, the gramophone. Whiskey bourbon, whiskey, whiskey scotch. Okay. I I'm I I I don't know what's going on. This is weird though. It's definitely interesting. I'm gonna let this little thing play through again and then I guess I'm gonna go back to the house because apparently that's all this does. Oh, I gotta, I gotta fight the the words. I gotta keep the words from getting to the to the center there. Interesting, interesting. It's a little mini game. I guess it's like we're fighting the urge to drink or something. Nope, you get away. You get away. Well, this is hard. I don't. How long do I gotta do this? It just keeps coming back. I think one of them got to it. Okay, okay, I did enough of it, okay. I felt trapped. I was out of breath in this cozy farmer's paradise. The noose was about to tighten around my neck. I went to the bank. So, where do you work, ma'am? I'm a housewife. I'm not working anymore. I mainly just run the house. But I used to be an ornithologist. Ornith... Excuse me, how do you spell that? O-R-I-O-R-N-I-T-H-O-L-O-G-I-S-T A scientist who studies birds. Hmm, I see. And how about the man of the house, ma'am? What does he do? Um, let's say he rents out the land. Wait. Walter Harris? The writer? The affair with the killer? The black tulip? I see. You're a fan. Ha ha. No, I'm afraid not. My wife, though. She loves his books. Who would have thought right here in our backyard? Ha. <laughs> yeah? Well, ma'am, I'm really sorry, but we're not able to give you a loan. Well, to you personally. But why don't you bring your husband with you next time? I'm sure we can figure something out. The idea is that my husband will not participate. I see. I need the money, not him. Hmm. In that case, ma'am, if you are urgently needing money, why don't you take out your 30000 and... 30000 Oh, well, um... One second, please. Shuffles through the papers. Well, well. Well. Oh. I do apologize, ma'am. That was my mistake. 
The 30,000 is your insurance, I just noticed. What insurance? What 30,000 are you talking about? Peers at the sheet of paper. Yes, that's right, it's insurance. How silly of me. Looks like it. Mr. Walter's publisher took out a life insurance policy. Here, see for yourself. In the event of death or disappearance... Okay, this part you can skip. Beneficiary receives a lump sum payment of $30,000. I think it's a standard contract. As insurance goes. I apologize once again. I didn't mean to cause any confusion. Um, thank you? You've been a big help. Glad to hear. I'll be waiting for you and Mr. Harris. All the best, ma'am. Let me remind you that in our bank you can also insure your contribution or... The clerk's words breaking through the cracked, graceless lips disappeared into thin air. Thirty thousand. Thirty thousand dollars. An incredible sum of money. It felt like the more I thought about it, the less I understood how much money that really was. Walter. He'd never said a word. But why? Why? Why indeed? I remember the strange feeling. It was weak and not quite established, existing on the periphery of consciousness. But the moment I tried to catch it to pay attention to my sensations, I left the bank in the dry spring wind of the outside. Dispelled those thoughts as if they never happened. I think I parked on that side. Laura! Hey, Laura. Hello, Margaret. It's so good to see you. How long has it been since we last saw each other? Come to think of it, I haven't seen Walter much either. How's he doing, by the way? Uh, wonderful. Margo, hurry up. We're packed in here. Move your hips, girl. Looks like my break's over. I'm coming. Anyway, Loretta. Oh, by the way, we're gonna go see a movie on Saturday. You should join us. And one more thing. I wanted to talk. Margo! Look, I'll stop by if I'm in the neighborhood. You don't mind, right? Well, I gotta bounce. Margo! I'll keep your tips. Alright, I'm coming for Christ's sake. Ginger bitch. Gotta bounce. <laughs> Car. Clicky clicky. I lied, of course. I'm not an ornithologist. Never have been, and studied nowhere. Just a habitual lie I tell when I'm pretending to be someone I'm not. I once read an article about a female ornithologist. She was on an expedition of some sort. I liked it. Though I'm not much of a bird lover. Can't love harbingers of disease, after all. The day was hotter than usual. The windows in the moth were open all the way. I could feel the sun's rays burning my skin through the windshield. A swarm of thoughts ravaged through my mind. So I hadn't noticed that I was running out of gas. The old bag of bolts chugged 30 gallons a mile. Damn. But I was also lucky for the first time that day. As a gas station appeared out of the blue, the concrete facade rising out of the field, rising out of the middle of a field, decorated with cracks like the wrinkled face of an old woman. And even though it was only the, it was on the only road leading home, I can't say I'd ever noticed the gas station before. Take it. I'm gonna take a brochure. Good afternoon, ma'am. How can I help you? It's not going so well. It's too hot. You're right, ma'am. It's almost a hundred degrees out. Fill up for three dollars. Surely. Is there anything else I can do for you? I don't even know what I want. If you'll allow me, ma'am, I may have exactly what you need. You do? It's a new repellent with a super secret formula. It'll kill rats, mice, any kind of vermin that may be plaguing you. And it's got a lovely almond smell to boot. All for the low, low price of $1.99. It can't fail. I don't think that... Ah, what am I saying? You seem to be a good housewife. Please, take a sample and see for yourself. It's on the house. Hmm, well, I assure you, ma'am, you won't be disappointed. Uh, where's the sample? Clicky clicky. Can I, can I just, oh, I just walk over to it, I see. Mm. 
The Devil in Disguise. Okay, same basic concept. We're keeping these words, whatever they're saying, out of this door. I can't even read that, honestly. I don't even know what it says. Oh, maybe we, we let those words in. Maybe I'm, I'm clicking on the wrong ones. Okay. Okay. All right. Fear. Money. Okay, so I had to click on the good words. They, they was reflected in the black thing, which was kind of cool. Hi, Walt. It's stuffy as hell in here. Thought I was going to melt today. Isn't it a little early to be breaking out the wine? Why do you look so happy? It's finished. What is? How come? You finished your book? Yup. But that's... that's wonderful. Why haven't you... The publishers agreed. I sent them the first chapters. I don't want to jink it before anything's set in stone, but they say people from Metro Silver Mire are interested. They could even turn it into a motion picture. Just imagine. Starring Clark Gable. I thought he quit acting. Then Harry Cooper. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Hollywood, Laura. Yes, you're right. I'm sorry. Oh, Walter. I'm so happy. Good for you. Good for us, sweetheart. Can the wine wait a little? I'll cook us both a real nice supper. How about you cook us up that steak you know I love? I honestly didn't expect that. For a moment it seemed that everything could change. A flash of hope. Dice the vegetables. Let's let's cut up the vegetables. Walter publishes the novel. We return to New York, to our apartment on Twelfth Avenue, as if we never left. Life gets back to normal again. He's made promises before. He found another woman as soon as we opened the door of the damn house. He gambles us into the ground when we're already dirt poor. Why should I think they'll stop in New York? Add Pepper. But still, something deep inside me, some strange mechanism has been triggered and I seem to be helpless to stop it. Add poison. Add nothing. Hey, how's it going? Ready. Coming right up. I'll bring it to the table. This would be our last supper together. I told him I was leaving. I told him I knew about Margaret. Told him I couldn't live like that anymore. That wasn't too broken. Walt wasn't too broken up about it. You're making a big mistake. He said his mouth full of steak. But you know what? I think for the first time in my life, I'm doing something right. That night I couldn't fall asleep. The storm ended just as suddenly as it started. The weather cleared up. The clouds disappeared and the stars shone brilliantly in the sky. So bright, it can only be seen at a farm. I dread the thought of what I could have done, but I hadn't, luckily. I decided not to take our s scarce savings. Just pawned the wedding ring and bought a bus ticket to the west coast to California. I have a younger brother who lives there though we haven't seen each other for years. Like a pioneer or some character of Steinbach's novels, like the thousands who'd fallen victim to the Great Depression, I had no idea what awaited me. Maybe some would condemn what I did. Maybe some would tell me I'm too late. I could be told there's no running away from yourself. Maybe some would tell me there's no running away from who I am. But I say to hell with them. It's never too late to start living. I knew it wouldn't be easy. But I felt that there's a new beginning ahead of me. Push space to go back to menu. I don't know, Walter. I have a bad feeling about this. Maybe we can still go back. Go back? Where? To New York, huh? 
Oh, come on, baby. I promise you will love it here. The nature, the air, just beautiful, all in all. Well, what can possibly go wrong? Well, that was really interesting, and I think I got a different ending there than what I was going for, because in the beginning, it was already implied that I had killed my husband, killed a detective, and then at the end, I somehow averted averted those decisions, and I went to live with my little brother in California. That was really cool, though. I really liked that, and I will definitely be wishlisting that so I can watch it. But that was the demo for Loretta, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.